Last time, we started talking about the, the quantize the Maxwell theory in the Lorentz gauge. So in the Lorentz gauge, we consider the following action. Okay, so, so we showed earlier that the Lorentz gauge can be ensured just following the equation motion. So you just get from here the equation motion, and uh, uh, then the equation motion, yeah, so e equation motion will lead to partial square, partial mu a mu equal to zero. So this is almost ensure partial mu a mu equal to zero. You just have to make sure your boundary conditions such as the uh, partial mu a mu equal to zero, okay? So, and in particular, uh, the action is particularly simple for psi equal to one, and in which case, we just have, the action just have a falling form. Okay? So as if you just have four decoupled massively scalar. Okay, as if you just have four pa uh, uh, a massive scalar, okay? And the equation motion, exactly, is all very simple. And uh, um, so, um, so we can just proceed, copy our result before for the um, for massive scalar, okay? And just treat each a mu as a massive scalar, and then, uh, then we can just do it. For example, the uh, canonical, so the canonical momentum conjugate to a mu would be just a mu dot. Okay, just a mu dot. Okay, and uh, um, yeah. So so the canonical condensation condition then is given by And then we can also just straightforwardly write down a mu, the expansion for the, the operator uh, expansion for, for a mu. Okay. So, um, so we have four of them. So uh, again, we will, instead of writing them as four massively scalar, we will, as we did before, for the, mark, for the coolant gauge case, we introduce a, a, a polarization vector, okay? So we will introduce a polarization vector, so there are four possible, since there are four components, so there are four possible polarizations times So we just get that. So, so this epsilon mu alpha for alpha equal to zero, one, two, three. So these are four polarization vectors. Okay. So simplest, you can choose. You can just choose, say one zero 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 one zero zero etc. And in that case. And then, then this is just like four decoupled scalar, okay? But, but, but this way introduce a polarization vector allow we uh, to write them in a more general way. So we normally pick the, for example, the zeros component, 
the the zero polarization vector just to be along the time direction. Okay, so just along the time direction. And uh, then then we also introduce a lot of so so the number three we introduce to be proportional to the direction of the momentum. Okay, so this is proportional to the mo parallel to the momentum, to the spatial momentum. So the k mu here would be because this is massless. So we just have this. Okay, so so the zeros component is just equal to uh, the magnitude of k. And then then um, then we take the uh, uh, epsilon one two epsilon mu, the one two to be say uh, orthogonal to the momentum. Okay. So these are called the transverse. Uh, polarizations. So we take them also to be to be orthogonal to 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 zero's component it means there's no no the time uh, the time component for one two will be zero two okay and then also should be uh, uh, proportional uh, should also be uh, uh, orthogonal to the moment and uh, so um, yeah so we. Uh, Take also them to be orthogonal to each other. If mu mu, we take them to be orthogonal to each other. So this is also uh, also this is like the normal also normal condition. Okay, to take this basis to be also normal, and then this is also complete, means that if I sum over different alpha and beta, and actually I get it back to eta mu mu, okay? So this is called a complete list. So they form a complete basis, okay? So any Lorentz vector can be expanded in terms of So, so if we take, say, k to be the z direction, then the simplest choice would be, say, you just do, so we just have that. Okay, so this is simplest, but you can consider more general uh, polarization. Okay, and so now if you plug in this expansion as we do for the scalar, uh, and then you plug in back to that commutation relation, uh, and then you will get the commutation relation with a. So this is straightforward. So if we call this equation star, star star, this equation star. So plug star star into star, and then we get the a k alpha, a k prime, beta dagger should be equal to eta alpha beta two pi cube. Right. Okay, and the rest, the rest commutators will, uh, are all zero. Okay. Okay. And uh, and then you can define the vacuum. Defined as annihilated by all the alphas. 
okay, for any alpha and k. Okay. So and I will introduce the Hilbert space. I call it H big to be the psi, the connection of the connection of psi built by acting a k alpha dagger on zero. Okay. So 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 you can just add arbitrary number of them on zero, then you get your uh, Hilbert space. So I will call this Hilbert space to be my big Hilbert space, and you will see uh, uh, the reason uh, 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 we do that. Okay. So later we will see why we call this HP. So this seemingly all fine, but of course there are problems. Uh, this cannot be right because uh, Maxwell theory we said only have two transverse degrees freedom, but here we have four. Okay, we have four masses with a degrees freedom. We must have too many. Okay, and indeed, you see there here are problems. So one problem is the following. Okay. So one problem is the following. So there are problems. So one problem, yeah. Uh, so the zero sort of problem is that we have uh, uh, we have four massless degree freedom. Two too many. Okay. Okay. So we should we know that we only should should only have two. And the second, you see that this is a have a, 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 a is problematic. He said, you notice, so here we have eta alpha beta, eta mu mu, so this is all just from Lorentz covariance, okay? So, but this eta alpha beta is problematic because if you look at the commutator for ak0, okay, so the zeros. Uh, 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 the zeros uh, 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 that polarization, then you have a k zero, a k prime zero dagger equal to minus two pi cube, say delta k minus k prime. Okay, you have a minus sign. Okay. So this is problematic because if we say create particles, say if we create the particles by say um, by acting say by acting on a k alpha dagger on the zero, and then you find because of this minus sign. So yeah, so this creates particle. With polarization. Epsilon alpha mu, okay? So now because of this minus sign, you see that the, uh, if we look at the overlap between uh, uh, the particle with the zero's polarization, Okay, so if we look at k zero with some k prime zero, okay, and then because of this minus sign, we have minus. Okay, so this will be proportional to minus two pi cube theta cube k minus k. So this is smaller than zero. Okay, so you see actually the inner product, okay? So that means that this state actually has selective law. Okay, that means this state has selective law. Okay. 
So, but this is actually a good sign. So this is another way to see that this is, we have too many degrees of freedom. Okay, because, so that means not all degrees of freedom here can be physical. Okay, so here I just tell you, that, uh, 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 there are some degrees of freedom in here that must be unphysical because they have lactic norm. Okay, the states they create a, 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 a have lactic norm. So, so they cannot really correspond to genuine physical states. Okay. So, but those problems should not worry us because so far what we have done is to quantize this theory. Okay, so far we have done is to quantize this theory, but this theory is not the Maxwell theory. Okay, to get the Maxwell theory, we have to do two more steps. One more step, one step is to impose conditions so that make sure this partial mu a mu is equal to zero, because we haven't fixed the gauge, okay? Uh, the second condition is we mentioned before, so there are two more things we need to do. To do. The first is that we need to ensure the gauge partial mu a mu equal to zero. Okay? The, uh, the second thing is we mentioned before is that after fix, fixing the Lorentz gauge, they're still ready to uh, gauge to good freedom left. And we have to fix the, the residue gauge freedom in the Lorentz gauge. Okay? So, um, so when you do, do this, then you will get a physical Hilbert space. Okay, and you will get a physical Hilbert space. And this physical Hilbert space, you, uh, we will see, you will see, that will only contain, indeed, two transverse massless degrees freedom. Okay, and the two uh, degrees freedom here are, 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 get, uh, are, are got rid of. Okay, are got rid of. And uh, so, so, um, so in the past, I described those procedure in detail in class, but actually that didn't have very good effect. Okay, so so later uh, uh, I put it in the P set. Uh, uh, actually, I think it worked better. Uh, so force you to go through it and to think through it how to uh, how to do these two steps, okay? Uh, because those steps they're uh, they're not difficult uh, uh, um, technically, but you need to think carefully, okay? Uh, you need to think carefully. So let me just make some comment on this step. So recall in the in the coolant gauge. So in the coolant gauge, so recall, in coolant gauge, we impose this condition, we essentially solve this condition, we impose this condition, so classically we impose this condition essentially as part of equation motion. Uh, and we solve the the, uh, the a which satisfies this condition, which is going into to transverse uh, a. Okay. And then quantum mechanically, because we impose it as a, a, a classical equation, we impose it as part of equation motion uh, classically. So quantum mechanically, this become an operator equation which we impose on the operator. Okay. But in this case, we can no longer impose. But in Lorentz gauge, so, so this leads to the operator equation. But in the Lorentz gauge, we cannot impose partial mu a mu as the operator equation. Okay, because equation motion already almost imply 
this is equal to zero. We just have to impose some boundary condition to ensure that indeed this, uh, this equation only have solutions corresponding to partial mu and mu equal to zero. Okay, so if you impose this separately as the, uh, 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 um, yeah, so, so, so you only need to impose them uh, uh, as boundary condition. So quantum mechanically, okay, so that implies we cannot impose this as operate equation. Indeed, you are showing your p-set, and it would be inconsistent if you impose this as operate equation. So, so what does it mean at the quantum level corresponding to classically you impose the boundary condition? Okay, so, so classically impose boundary condition limit possible configurations you can have. Okay, limit possible configurations you can have at the quantum mechanical level corresponding to restriction on the states. So, so the quantum level, it turns out that the right thing to do is to impose this kind of condition on the states. Require your states to be annihilated by something like this, okay? But it turns out actually the story is more subtle than that. If you just require the states uh, annihilated by this thing actually does not work. And so you have to do a little bit more subtle, okay? Uh, so the fun will be in your p-set, okay? You will go through that, okay? You'll go through it. So do you have any questions? Yes? Why is it two minus two states? I mean, it's, uh, I guess, I guess it's Yeah, uh, so classically it does not matter. As a classical, it doesn't matter. You just, uh, but quantum mechanically, uh, 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 you will show in your p set if you impose this as a, uh, uh, operate equation, then that's in, uh, incompatible uh, with those can uh, canonical quantization condition. Yeah. Yeah, uh, here I just motivate that classically, uh, in order to ensure this, you only need to impose the boundary condition, uh, not as the equation motion. Yeah. So, so quantum mechanically, we just, uh, yeah. Other questions? Yes? Uh, yeah, you will see, you will see, uh, 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 you will see what's happening, yeah. So it turns out, yeah, yeah, let me just say one more, uh, say some words. So it turns out that when you do this step, and then you will eliminate, so the step one will eliminate the lactive norm state. Okay, so, so you find that once you impose properly this kind of condition on the states, and you actually eliminate the lactive loam state. But then you find after you eliminate the lactive loam state, in this Hilbert space, in this Hilbert space, there's still states of zero loam. Okay, there's still states of zero loam. And then, then when you fix the second, and then you eliminate the zero loam state. And then you get the, then you get your physical uh, Hilbert space. Because remember in the Coulomb gauge, everything just, just like harmonic oscillator, uh, there's no zero loam state, okay? Uh, you fix the gauge completely. But here, uh, because you didn't fix the gauge completely, and even after you eliminate those lactive loam states, you have zero loam states, and then they corresponding to gauge free, uh, uh, remaining gauge freedom, and once you uh, get rid of them, and then you have your, uh, um, yeah. Good. Any questions on this? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Good, 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 good. That's a very good question, which I'm waiting for you to uh, to ask. Uh, so, so the key thing. So you say we can certainly consider four massive scalar field. Uh, if I consider four massive scalar field, there should not be problem. Okay. Uh, 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 why there should be lactive loam state or zero loam state? But the key is that here. 
the state are contract uh, this a mu a lu are contracted using the Euclid, uh, Lorenzi metric. And so if you look at this Lagrangian, the zeros component actually have the opposite sign to the standard massless scalar field. Okay, and because of that. Uh, so this is not your ordinary massless scalar field. They actually have opposite sign in your Lagrangian. But you say, oh, can we just change the sign for that component? You cannot, because we have Lorentz symmetry. Okay, because we have Lorentz symmetry. Yeah. So the Lorentz symmetry force you somehow, uh, when you reduce the Maxwell theory to this four massive scalar, the one of them have the wrong sign. So that's why, uh, so that the wrong sign is related by you have the wrong sign here. Okay, and the why, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, the same kind of the Lorentz covariance uh, tell you here is eta alpha beta rather than delta alpha beta. And then delta alpha beta. Good. Okay. So, so this concludes our discussion of the canonical quantization for the Maxwell theory. So, so here I will quickly describe how to do it for the path integral. And uh, uh, so, so I will just do it very quickly. And uh, uh, because the many of the elements are familiar before. And so we just point out things which are new in the, uh, for, the, uh, for the Maxwell case. Okay. <clears throat> so we already familiar how to do the path integral. So Maxwell theory is a free theory. So in principle, we know how to do it. So let's just, yeah, so here, let's go back uh, without fixing the gauge first, okay? So, uh, so this is not completely uh, 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 starting from the uh, original, just starting from the S Maxwell equal to minus one quarter F mu mu, F mu mu, okay? So let's just go back to this theory. Um, uh, let's go back to this theory. And then let's just try to do, uh, 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 try to see how the Maxwell, uh, 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 how the path integral works. So, so remember, so this is a free theory. So we can just write down the generating functional for this theory. And then we can in principle calculate all possible correlation functions here. Okay, free theory is supposed to be very simple. So, so we just write down the generating functional, which being integrated over all, all a mu. And then we have I s, so this is Maxwell theory. And then plus, uh, then we add the source. Yeah, let me just, um, so this j mu have nothing to do with natural magnetic current. This is just a j mu with the generating function used to uh, taking derivatives, okay. So, so, so this is just an ex external source. So, so now this is a Gauss integral, so in principle we can just do the, do it. Okay, this is a Gauss, uh, uh, because this is quadratic, and now we are familiar how to do the quadratic integral, uh, we can just do it, okay. And to do it is that we write it, always write it in the form, uh, um, like this. We write it in the matrix form. Okay, we write it as a matrix form. And this, a mu, uh, this k mu mu just can be read from here by integration by part, et cetera. So let me just write down the answer. So this k mu mu just equal to, so let me call this zero, call this zero k mu mu. So this just given by partial square, eta mu nu minus partial mu, partial nu, and the delta function, okay. Okay, and the delta function. So this partial will only act on x, okay, only act on x. So, so naively we can just 
so, so now this is just it's a Gaussian integral, so you can use principle just to directly write down the answer. Actually, let me keep this here. So we print we can just directly write down the answer, just this dj equal to some number, some infinite number which will be labeled care, and the exponential i d four x d four y, then j mu x, then the k zero mu mu, yeah. Um, minus one, yeah, so let me just write it like this. Okay, zero minus one, mu mu, x minus y, j mu y, okay? So, so this is just almost exactly the same as we do before. So this is like the kernel for your Gaussian integral and you just take the inverse of it, and then you contract it with the source. Okay, so, 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 so you just now, uh, uh, the only difference from the scalar case or the, or, or the spinner case, you just now we, uh, now the in that, uh, other than the functional space of x and y, uh, now you also have a matrix in terms of Lorentz index, okay, uh, uh, mu nu. Okay, uh, uh, everything is the same as before. So, so it looks like then we already solved this theory, okay? But you should feel uneasy. You should feel uneasy because when we quantize it using the canonical method, we do have to go through some trouble, okay? So how come somehow part integral just do it immediately, okay? Somehow the, the trouble has to be conserved, <laughs> uh, no matter what <laughs> method you use, okay? Uh, no matter what method you use. Indeed, Indeed, so can someone guess what would be the potential trouble here? Yes? Like over time, because like, when you integrate over like, GKA, you could have two GAs, which differ only by gauge. Yeah, right. Yeah, so then like you're summing, you're summing over, like you're integrating over too many. Yeah, indeed, uh, 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 that's the correct statement. But, but if I just do it straightforwardly, somehow, uh, uh, then what's wrong with that? So, yeah, what you said is a conceptually. Conceptually, you should suspect there's something wrong here. Uh, 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 so whenever you conceptually suspect there's something wrong here, then you should technically looking for some mathematical problem. Because the conceptual mistake will always reflect in some mathematical difficulty. Yeah, yes? So you have to integrate the method DI yeah, yeah, you are right. It just you you integrate more things. Oh, you integrate more things, then you just get more infinite constant. But we don't care. Okay. <laughs> Maybe like a sign will be off because the sign was off earlier, right? So like when you like do like the, like the eigenvalues of the determinant or whatever, maybe it messes that up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the, but we have i, so it doesn't matter the sign. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So the key, you said the k is actually not invertible. <laughs> Turns out k minus one, so k, zero, actually not invertible. Okay. So the reason, so the reason is simple is that because of their gauge freedom in the original theory, because their gauge freedom in the original theory, by gauge freedom we mean that when you make a transformation by some arbitrary function, you know, your action does not change. Then that means that your, uh, this kernel must be invariant. 
under some, some, some transformation. It's invariant under some transformation means that this must have a zero eigenvector. Okay, when it has zero eigenvector, then, then, then must not be invertible. Okay, so, so now let's just see the explicitly. You see the explicit, it's easier to see this in momentum space, okay? So, so if we see the momentum space, so in momentum space, we can just directly write down the k0 mu mu, you just equal to k square, just k mu, k nu, minus k square eta mu mu, okay? So now it's obvious this has a, a, a zero eigenvector because this is precisely the minus k square, the transverse projector. So p mu mu t is the projector into the direction perpendicular to k mu. So, so, uh, so this satisfies the property that pt mu mu is equal to eta mu mu minus k mu k nu divided by k square and satisfy the property p mu mu t k nu is always equal to zero, okay? So you can easily see, because if you can check with k mu, and k mu can check with here, give you k square, and cancel with k square here, and you have k mu, and then k mu can check with this one, and just get k mu, so they get canceled, okay. So, uh, so this is the projected to the transverse space, of course, uh, I have zero eigenvalue, okay? Uh, uh, zero eigenvectors. Uh, uh, eigen uh, so, um, so then we see that this is not invertible in momentum space, and then we'll not be invertible in coordinate space. Okay, we'll not be invertible in coordinate space. And now, in coordinate space, now we can see with this understanding, then now we can immediately see in coordinate space, the eigenvector of zero eigenvalue precisely corresponding to a gauge transformation. Okay, it's because It's because in coordinate space, k mu, k mu translate, when you translate to coordinate space means partial mu. Okay, so k mu to coordinate means partial mu. Okay, so that means that for any function, partial mu lambda, Okay, this k zero mu nu, partial nu lambda must be zero. Okay? And you can check explicitly, so if you contract with partial mu here, and then you have a partial square, and you have partial mu, and then, and then eta mu mu give you partial mu, okay, uh, again the cancel. And of course, this is just precisely the gauge transformation. Uh, and this is precisely the gauge transformation. Okay, so the gauge transformation precisely is the zero eigenvector of this kernel. Okay, uh, it's the, uh, uh, the eigenvector of zero eigenvalue of this kernel. So that's why this is not inverted. Okay. So, yeah, so, so, um, So, so the way to fix is simple, because I remember this picture. So this is the space of the full configurations of A mu, and, uh, and A mu along those trajectories are, are equivalent. And, but, uh, 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 and the, uh, to quantize it, we, uh, we need to just, uh, uh, the physical configuration uh, uh, corresponding to a section of it. So what this says is that K zero, it's not invertible in this full space because you have this uh, zero eigenvectors along this direction. Okay, zero eigenvector could run in this direction. But if we restrict to a cross section, 
And then, then this zero eigenvector no longer exists. Okay, and then uh, you will be invertible. Okay, so once we fix the gauge, uh, and then we then we expect then uh, then the k mu after you fix gauge should be invertible. Okay. Good. So so now let's fix the gauge. Okay. So 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 k zero we will restrict it. To a section should be uh, should be uh, uh, invertible. Okay, so so we need, so we need to fix the gauge. So we will do this for the Lorentz gauge. You can do similar things for the for the uh, for the Coulomb gauge. The reason we do the Lorentz gauge, just the Lorentz gauge, uh, later when we introduce interactions, we will always work with Lorentz gauge. Okay, and when we discuss QED, we will always work with Lorentz gauge. So here I will uh, elaborate in the Lorentz gauge. Yes. Oh yeah. So so this zero eigenvector, so this is a, a zero eigenvector of the K zero, right? So uh, and the partial mu, uh, partial mu lam uh, lambda just parameterizes this direction, okay? But if you restrict to a, a section of it, and then you are not allowed to worry along uh, away from it, uh, and then this direction just go, uh, so you don't uh, no longer have that zero eigenvector anymore. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. So, so uh, 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 indeed, you have to integrate. Yeah, you have to integrate over y. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If I write this precisely, so you have to integrate over this y and y. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah so this is the proper way to write it. Yeah. yeah. Good. So why does this um, issue only happen for gauge symmetries? Like, why don't the other symmetries do the same? Yeah. Yeah, because the other symmetries, so because, the, because you have local symmetries, so the local symmetry tells you there's really some degree freedom redundant. So this is really corresponding to, so this lambda x, so this all possible choice of lambda is really corresponding to some finite trajectory uh, uh, in your configuration space. So if you have a global symmetry, global symmetry is independent of uh, coordinates. So uh, from this point of view, a global symmetry just relates to the uh, configuration at this point to the configuration at that point and uh, at that point. Okay, uh, a global symmetry because it's independent of the space time, the, uh, uh, that transformation don't don't change your number of degrees freedom. Yeah, they don't correspond to actually a trajectory in your in your configuration space. Yeah. Mm. Good. Other questions. Okay, very good. So now we will fix the gauge. So in the past integral to fix the gauge would be, uh, uh, as, uh, in principle, it's straightforward. Okay, so, so we will consider Lorentz gauge. Okay, you can do the similar thing with the, uh, uh, with the Coulomb gauge. Okay, it's just Lorentz gauge normally we work with more. So, so how do we fix the gauge? So in the past integral, we do it easily. So we have this integral. We have then we insert the delta function corresponding to the Lorentz gauge. Okay. So uh, so uh, so this is should be considered as um, a delta function. So you uh, so this is a delta function at one point, and then you take the product of all points. Okay, so this is a delta function in the uh, functional space. And then we will have then I s, uh, this s Maxwell, and then you can have a j. Okay, you can uh, consider the generated function. So this will restrict, okay, this will restrict you on this, uh, 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 on some cross section, okay? 
uh, on some cross section. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So let me make a remark here. So here you actually have to be a little bit more careful. So, so what we actually really want to do, okay, what we really want to do is we just want to insert here. We just want to insert here delta a mu equal to a mu gauge fixed, okay? Say, say we just, uh, 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 what we want, uh, uh, what we really want to do is we want just to restrict a mu to some uh, 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 some cross section, okay. But here, but for example, here for the range gauge, we can normally not solve this condition, okay. So that's why uh, uh, we do here because we don't know how to write uh, this a mu fixed explicitly, okay. But but going from here to here, actually, there's a long trivial Jacobian because this is a a, a, a long trivial, yeah, in the functional space. And then this is a long trivial function uh, uh, on the uh, on a mu, okay. So 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 in principle, okay. So uh, uh, this uh, the related yeah. Uh, in principle, there's a Jacobian. So yeah. So let me just write this explicit. A mu x are related. By some Jacobian, then delta a mu minus delta a mu fixed, or uh, minus a mu fixed. Okay. But now this, but now notice that this can uh, this function is a linear function of a a. So remember, when you do the Jacobian, you have to take the derivative. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 just remember this fun remember this formula, delta f x is equal to 1 over f prime x delta x minus x0. So x0 is the solution for f x equal to 0, okay? Uh, and so you have to, uh, 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 so you have to, yeah, so this is a Jacobian uh, 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 when you convert the delta function. So uh, yeah, if you have a multiple variables, then it would be the, uh, 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 this would be the Jacobian. And so uh, so this goes when you take the derivative on this function. But this is a linear. This thing is linear in a mu. Okay, when you take the derivative, you will get something which is independent of a mu. So this Jacobian will just involve in some. Yeah, will be independent of a mu in the function space. Something independent of mu with just some constant, okay? So, uh, so this just gives you some infinite constant. And so we always throw infinite number, uh, infinite number away, so, so we don't care about it, okay? And so we, uh, we can just write down this, okay? So this is just a, a remark. So, so now, we have to evaluate this guy. So now we have to be, uh, now we have to evaluate this guy. It turns out this guy is still not easy to solve, and for the same, uh, it, it, it's not easy to do. Just for the same reason, we don't know how to solve this a mu fix. Okay, we don't know how to solve this condition explicitly. So now I'm going to use some trick. Okay, uh, uh, I will use two tricks. Okay, we are, I, I will use two tricks. To convert this into something manageable, okay. Uh, uh, to convert into this uh, uh, manageable, and uh, so so this trick applying to to the to the Maxwell is like killing a little bird with a big cannon, uh, and uh, so so uh, yeah, it works here, but its real genuine use is actually in the long abelian gauge theory. So when you quantize the Yamil theory, and that becomes essential. Uh, because it will be very complicated to contact using other methods. And so, so contact the Yamil theory becomes essential. And so, uh, so but, uh, but, but nevertheless, let me just tell you these two tricks, how to treat this here, okay? So 
So, so this method is called Fadif Popov method and it was uh, invented by, by two Russian uh, uh, so, uh, former Soviets, Fadif Popov, and uh, in the 60s. And uh, um, so, yeah, so actually there was a story behind it. Uh, uh, so when they, when they invented this method, uh, they actually want to quantize uh, uh, not this uh, Maxwell theory, uh, this non-abinning uh, young male theory, which later uh, will become the standard model, okay, become standard model of particle physics, uh, electroweak theory, QCD, et cetera. But when they worked on young male theory, young male theory was some small corner of mathematical physics, nobody cares, okay. So when they invented this method, nobody really paid attention. Uh, and nobody uh, really paid attention. But then in 1971, to Hooft, who was a 21 year old, like a graduate student, and then he used that, which quantized uh, the, the, the uh, non abelian gauge theory coupled to Higgs, okay? So before that, people thought that theory was inconsistent. But then he used this part in the girl to quantize that theory, okay? And so that was a trump, which you know, uh, Tohoff got the Nobel Prize there a number of years ago. And then when Tohoff's paper came out using this method, nobody could understand it in US, <laughs> okay? People like, people like Weinberg, who, who, who wrote the electroweak theory, uh, uh, which to hope to quantize it, uh, and he couldn't understand it. And there's only one person, one person who could understand it in the US. It's, uh, uh, he was an assistant professor uh, at Stony Brook. Yeah, so because he, uh, so he started his assistant professor going to Stony Brook, and in the Stanley book, there was a big shot, uh, uh, the Nobel Prize winner, C.N. Young, who invented this young male theory. So he was asking Young, oh, what should I do for my research? Uh, ask for Nobel Prize winner for, for, for the vice. And uh, Young said, maybe you can look at this Fadif Popov stuff. And uh, then turned out, in, uh, later, uh, only himself could understand the Hoft paper. And then he immediately, uh, of course, he also did some other uh, good stuff, but, but immediately he became the only person Everybody went to, okay? <laughs> and uh, because he really understood the story, he, yeah, anyway, yeah, so it's so actually a very interesting story behind this. Okay? So, um, so first we have to actually modify this Lorentz gauge condition a little bit. For the, so rather than writing as partial mu a mu, let's try to impose the gauge partial mu a mu equal to some arbitrary function bx, okay? Because partial mu a mu will give some trajectory here, but if I choose some arbitrary function bx, will just give you some other trajectory, okay? Uh, it's still some trajectory. So, uh, so, so what bx you choose doesn't matter, okay? So, uh, so, uh, so you can just replace this delta function partial mu a mu here by delta partial mu a mu bx. Okay, so this is the first non-trivial step. Okay. And uh, yeah, so this will give you some other trajectory. So now since the bx does not matter, okay, since the bx does not matter, we can actually integrate over bx. Okay. And so then the next step, okay, is to, so first you place that. So this is the first step. And then the next step is that you replace Z by you integrate over Bx with a, a measure. Is square x, and then original z, okay? So the original zj, which now depend on b, because I have replaced this condition, and now I just, since, it, since this b does not matter, 
So I can just integrate over B with some arbitrary uh, measure you want. Okay? The, the only thing this does just give you an infinite constant. Again, we don't care infinite constant. Okay. Okay, so, so this gives you some infinite constant. Since this thing is supposed not to be depend on B, okay? But this actually is very useful because the reason we do this is because now when we do this, the, the path integral become the following, become dB, dA mu. Now we have delta a mu, uh, partial mu, a mu minus bx. And then we have exponential is the minus this i xi one half b square. And then I have this i j dot a. Okay, so now you see the benefit. Because now I have integration over B, but the B appears very simply in the data function. So now I can evaluate the data function by using the integral of B. Okay? By using the integral of B. So now I will get, so now I can just do the straightforwardly do the B integral. So now I get a new action. I is psi plus i j dot a. And now this I ask psi, so this ask psi is just given by your original Maxwell, the minus psi over two partial mu a mu square. Okay? So that's the reason we put b square here. Is that when we evaluate the b integral, and then we get something quadratic, okay? And now we, uh, uh, we have that. And now you see this action is precisely this action we have there, okay? Okay, it's precisely that action we uh, uh, given there. So we also derive it using path integral, okay? We also derive it using path integral. Uh, using this trick, okay. So, so now we just have this. Now we just have this. And now, we can uh, straightforwardly calculate, uh, now we can straightforwardly calculate this Gaussian integral. Yeah, now we can just straightforwardly calculate this integral. So by the way, the reason I say the um, the story here is uh, um, trivial. Uh, uh, it's a little bit uh, killing a bird. With uh, uh, it's because for the Maxwell case, uh, this uh, Jacobian is actually trivial. Okay, it's a constant. But if you do it for a long abelian gauge theory, say for the electric weak theory of a QCD, and this Jacobian is highly non-trivial. And uh, and the part of this trick is it, it, also how to treat this Jacobian, <clears throat> which we don't have to do here. Okay. So here we have a much simpler story. So, so now we can just look at this part in the group, which now S psi become invertible, because we already know from here. This is invertible, at least for psi equal to one, given by this, this is invertible, okay? So, so you can actually now, now invert, so, so now we can write this S psi is equal to one half before x, a mu x k mu k mu nu psi x minus y a nu y 
and this k mu nu. So uh, yeah, k mu nu is just whatever you get uh, from that thing. Okay, it's just whatever you get from that thing. And then and then and then the k mu nu now is invertible. Uh, and then you find the uh, 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 the this thing just becomes some constant. Then exponential i d four x d four y j mu x then k psi minus one and the new x minus one j mu y. Okay. And again, this inverse give you the Feynman function. Okay. Uh, 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 again, this give you the Feynman function. So, so the k psi minus one mu mu. Okay, or mu nu. So, so you can just uh, uh, you can, yeah. So we are not going to detail here. The story is straightforward. So this should correspond to the Feynman function. For the two uh, 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 gauge fields, okay. Okay, this should correspond to the Feynman function of these two uh, gauge fields. So, so now let me just write down the answer. Uh, so I urge you to check it yourself explicitly, okay. Uh, uh, so, so you can easily write down what is k mu mu here, okay. And then uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you need to write down what's k mu mu here, and then you can uh, uh, write down what's the k minus one. Okay, so so let me just write down the answer, which we actually will use it later for the Feynman diagram calculation. Okay, so you can show that this given by in momentum space minus i k squared minus i epsilon. Remember now here is massless, and then you have eta mu mu minus plus psi minus one k mu k mu divided by k squared. Okay. So you can work out the inverse given by this, and so this can also be written as in terms of the minus i k square plus i epsilon, you have you can write it in terms of this po uh, a transverse projector p mu mu t, then plus psi p mu mu l. So p mu mu l is the um, Longitudinal projector, you just define it by k, k mu, k nu divided by k squared. Okay, that defined by uh, by k squared. Okay, so uh, so this is a, a answer very simple. Okay, so now the interesting thing. Okay, the uh, the two interesting thing here. Um, yeah, so let me just make some remarks. So first, if you look at psi equal to one, then this term vanishes, and then you just have eta mu mu divided by k squared minus i epsilon, okay? So that's exactly what you expect from here. So here you just have essentially have the massless, uh, uh, you just have the massless, uh, 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 one over k square uh, propagated is propagated for the massless particle. And then you have eta mu mu, okay, from the Lorentz uh, uh, signature, okay? Uh, 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 so, so, so for eta equal to one, in, uh, psi equal to one indeed recover that. So along the common is having psi equal to zero. So this is just proportional to the transverse projector. Okay? 
to the Chang'e projector. But remember, the original Maxwell action, when you set psi to zero, actually that's not invertible. Okay, so 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 here we're actually doing a different order. We uh, we we first take a long zero psi, we we invert it, and then you can say it actually psi equal to zero. Okay, that still works. Okay, and and then psi equal to zero still works. Okay, because we already fixed the gauge. Okay, uh, already fixed the gauge. So so this is second remark. And then yeah, and then the and then the weak theorem. For a mu, just immediately follows. From here, just as what, uh, uh, as in the case for the uh, for the uh, scalars and the fermions, uh, 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 yeah, immediately follows. Okay, you just contract. You all get the Feynman functions between them. Yes. Oh uh, no, it's not difficult. Um, so 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 when uh, 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 one simple thing, uh, 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 this one point I'm going to make a little bit later. Uh, um, yeah, uh, 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 in a few minutes later, and actually uh, uh, for uh, yeah yeah, let me make some comment a little bit later. Yeah, yeah, they're completely equivalent. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for what we for what we want to do, it, it, it's actually a little bit simpler, okay? Uh, 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 for reasons I'm going to mention, yeah. Other questions? Yes. Yeah, it's it, big, big, uh, big, because the uh, a projector is just a very simple way uh, to. So this. So this is just, so by definition, this is symmetric in mu nu. Okay, this is big, uh, definition uh, uh, is symmetric in mu nu because on the time order, you can just uh, exchange them. Then that means that in terms of Lorentz indices, you must be able to expand it in some symmetric tensors built from k mu. Okay, because k mu is the only vector here. So, so that means uh, you have to build this symmetric tensor from just eta mu mu and k mu, uh, and uh, and the uh, transverse and uh, and the uh, uh, non jepsonian projectors are just the tensors you can build from the k mu. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's not the residual gauge film. Just you can show that the physics is independent of C. Yeah, you don't. Uh, you can take C to be any value. Yeah. Okay. Good. Other questions? Yes. Good. 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 So uh, yeah. So that's the comment I'm going to make later. Yeah. Yeah. That's common. Uh, uh, that's a good question, uh, uh, which I'm going to make later. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let me just uh, 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 make this comment, and then we'll be clear. Uh, I need to make one comment first. So now, for for various physical processes, which we will consider later, we are interested in the following thing. So now we can just generalize immediately. So now consider. Uh, now we can just consider. Interacting theory of a mu psi and the phi. Okay, so so a mu will be the Maxwell. This will be some Dirac field. There will be some scalar field, or even uh, multiples of them. So for uh, for any such theory, we now have to compute the co uh, vacuum correlation function. Then, then just uh, what we did before, just immediately follow. 
just be d phi, then x exponential i s phi, and then d phi exponential i s. Okay, so so again, I always use omega to denote uh, the vacuum of the uh, uh, interacting theory. And then again, you can rewrite this as a theory of free theory. It's now this become in the free theory zero, p x exponential i uh, interacting part zero, and the zero exponential i p s i zero. Okay, so so now again for any interacting theory, we can just use the same procedure, and then we can just do Feynman diagrams. Okay, you can just do Feynman diagrams. Okay. And then then the then the Feynman rule. Yeah, we can just do Feynman diagrams. And the Feynman rules just follow. Okay. So now, yeah, as you already asked, this sounds a little bit too simple because we just look at this action. We just look at this action, but we haven't done what we promised you would do in your PSAT. Because by doing this, we say you haven't, you really have not completely fixed the uh, uh, imposed the partial mu a mu yet. Okay, so so remember we said that when you have this, that will lead to this kind of equation. You still have to impose the boundary conditions to impose the partial mu a mu equal to zero. But now it seems like we are not doing anything like that. Okay, we are not doing anything like that. And also it seems like we are not fixing the residue uh, uh, gauge freedom. Okay, uh, uh, why don't we do it? So we don't have to do it because here we are only interested in calculating the vacuum correlation functions. And the vacuum is automatically a physical state. Okay, uh, as you will see your PSA, the vacuum is automatic physical state. And so, uh, uh, so it's, already in your, it's already a physical state. So, so in the vacuum, and all those unphysical degrees free just automatically will decouple. Okay, they, you don't have to worry about them. And, uh, and so that's why, but if you're interested in the excited states, and then you have to go through the exactly the same kind of procedure to get rid of, uh, uh, to do a more complicated thing as you would do in your PSA. And, uh, but here, since we are computing just a special class of physical quantities, and then, and then just by doing this, it's already enough, okay? And you don't have to worry about other sort of stuff, okay? You don't have to worry about other sort of stuff. Okay, so, so I think we are, um, we are done for the uh, quantizing the uh, Maxwell theory. So now we have all our elements, yes? Yeah. So we had this, we had this right. Yeah. Oh, you do the same thing. You do the same thing, right? You just expand them. Just expand the SI. Whatever is in SI, you just treat them together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, uh, uh, indeed, so, uh, normally we assume all the coupling SI are of the same order, and then you just expand SI, and then, yeah. But, uh, but indeed, you can uh, see the special situation. Uh, uh, you may want to expand some couplings, not expand some other couplings, and uh, then that depends on specific situation. Okay. Other questions? Okay, good, good. So, so let's conclude our discussion of quantizing of Maxwell theory. And so, so, so now, 
uh, 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 so we have quantized the photon, okay? We have quantized the Maxwell theory using the Coulomb gauge, then we see the two photon degree freedom, okay? And then we also did canonical quantization for Lorentz gauge, which we will finish in your P set. And then we also discussed how to treat it in path integral so that you can calculate this kind of questions. Okay, so that we can treat these kind of questions. And uh, uh, so now let's go. Now we have all the technicality, all the tools we need. Now we can tackle QED. Okay, so now finally we can tackle QED. So this is the theory of photon and the electron. Okay, uh, uh, this is the theory of photon and electron. And uh, 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 so we can consider the physical process uh, in this theory, which a mu and psi now interacting with each other. Okay, a mu and psi now interacting with each other. And uh, uh, so yeah, so we will uh, start doing it. Uh, uh, I think we are out. Yeah, we only have two minutes left. So, so maybe we will finish a little bit early today. Okay, yeah, yeah, so that's all for today.